Hey everyone, Suri here, and welcome back to another week of Anima Season Defense Matches. I ended up keeping the defense the same for the week. I think it's been doing pretty well overall, and I'd like to see how it holds up over time. There are still a few kinks I'd like to iron out, and after pulling Katria, I might experiment with using her to enable the duo's hindrance instead of Dorothea. But for now, things are pretty settled. As is, while the defense doesn't use a turn 1 initiation approach, it's still very difficult to crack it open safely thanks to the double safe skills. The combination of Eliwood, Rajat, and Felix can handle a lot of plunking strategies too, although some safe balls can still give them trouble. Together, it covers most of the common offense strategies pretty well, and I'm pretty happy with how well it does in general. Things did hold up pretty well this week, overall. There were only two losses, and one of them did secure a knockout, so I'm pretty happy with the results. But there are still some things I'm tinkering with, I'm actually trying out a couple of new skills for a shot in this dark season, but overall I think the defense is still in a good spot. So let's get to the first match. So this one's an interesting way to start the week off. They brought along a maxed out Micaiah, who's just really, really impressive. I'd like to get mine to this point eventually, but it's she's still a few merges and a whole lot of dragon flowers away. And they're backing her up with a duo Makaya, and a duo Peony, and a brave Edelgard. There's a lot of firepower on this team, especially with the double attack boost from the Mythics, and Edelgard's a really great wall for blocking off the units who don't want to get attacked. And Makaya herself is a really great frontliner thanks to Close Foil, as long as you pick off the right targets. They start this right away, and, well... Micaiah is one of Felix's very consistent weaknesses. So, she doesn't have any problems dealing with him. Right and the duo Micaiah can pick off Cirrus before she causes the other Micaiah any problems. They... I think they forgot either about... Edelgard's marching, which would be odd since they're using her, or that she would activate since they picked off units to start with. And, well, she marches right past Micaiah and picks off the duo Micaiah without any problems. And then Rashad's null follow-up means she gets to survive this Micaiah, which puts her in a lot of trouble since now she can't counterattack, and Eliwood gets to shift her out of the way for free. While he doesn't get to Gale Force here, he does get to get danced, and well, at that point, he can pick up a very easy knockout on Peony, and then activate Gale Force and pick off Altina as well. Sadly, Rashad can't quite finish off Micaiah here. She probably would with you know, some more investment, but it's still enough for them to surrender the match, so I'm not too worried about it. This one was fun to see just because it's mm, kind of similar to the team I was using for most of the week myself with a Brave Edelgard and a Legendary Edelgard. They're actually using Distant Counter on their Legendary Edelgard, which is a, it's an interesting choice. It's less all-in on the Gale Force strategy than what I like to run with mine, but it does make her a very effective mixed phase unit. And Legendary Corrin's a great extra tank as well when she's in season. They get this started right away. 
but unfortunately the rally means that, well, Felix ends up jumping forward to attack Corin instead of Edelgard. And while Cor Corin does a lot of damage to him, you can't quite finish him off, and without getting another negating fang for the bonfire, she can't survive his follow-up. Edelgard can survive Elliewood pretty easily, but he also gets to Gale Force past her, and, well, that gives him an easy knockout on Reagan. Unfortunately, Mirabilis decides that she's got this fight instead of dancing. But she does get Nadelgard low enough that Rashad can finish the job. They decide to keep going here. Legendary Edelgard can finish Elliot off, which lets her raging storm through. Unfortunately, Naga can't quite finish Felix off here. And they can finish him off with Plumeria, but at that point their team is really left vulnerable for the following turn. They move Edelgard over here, I think just to try and survive the next turn. But Rajat moves in and just shreds Naga, so that's pretty good for us. then gets danced forward and can take a pretty massive bite out of Fatal Guard. Fatal Guard gets to survive here, thanks to the heal, but she's left with a single hit point left once the weapon kicks in. And Dorothea can move in and pick off Flumeria. before our Edelgard and jumps forward and closes out the match. This was a fun team to see. It's actually very similar to the last one, just with a few more merges on their legendary Edelgard. And they backed her up with different units too. This Lynchia and Inns are both really solid, especially in Inns bonus week. I think this team's actually got a very strong hit and run or hit and tank option. Between Lynn and Edelgard, you can get a lot done before the enemy team can really react. And I think that's what they were going here, or going for here. Unfortunately, losing their bolt tower cuts down a lot on their options for taking things out, and they spend a couple of turns just trying to figure out the right approach here. I think they ended up deciding that they'd need to get the map started before they could do too much, so they just let Edelgard attack into our Edelgard, and then pull back and try to get out of range of anything that comes after them. Unfortunately, Ali would rallies forward, as usual, and then gets danced to one-shot Reagan. Unfortunately, that means he doesn't get to Gale Force, but he still gets a knockout, so that's pretty good. Felix can't do the same with their legendary Edelgard, unfortunately. She's still really bulky, even when she's not so low, and the green color helps a lot. But Rashat does get danced and can jump forward to one-shot Naga. And losing those two is enough for them to surrender the match and move on.
this was another fun match to see. They brought along a nearly maxed out Brave Hector. He's only missing a single merch. It's very impressive. And they backed him up with this actually maxed out Winter Cecilia. The armor slaying dagger and bolt fighter is a really great way to help her break through armor units in general. And that's a good pick for her, I think, with armors being pretty relevant these days, especially far safe armors. And I think they make a really solid hit and tank type of combination here. They end up just trying to bait using Hector, instead of trying to pick anything off first. I think they were hoping to use the Bolt Tower after this turn to help deal with everything after the initial fight starts. Unfortunately, Hector doesn't finish Hollywood off in one hit. And since he's running Soul, he actually can't one-shot Rajat either which leaves him very exposed for the follow-up. And Rajat can finish him off pretty cleanly, thanks to no follow-up. Unfortunately, Dorothea gets baited into, into attacking Cecilia, and she doesn't get a whole lot done there. They do decide to keep going. Reagan's adaptive damage means she can finish Felix off without any problems. And then they can dance her forward, but I think they might have forgotten about the near save from Edelgard. No mercy. And just not been looking at the combat forecast. You can't stop me. And attacking into Edelgard like that is not going well for Reagan. And that's enough for them to surrender and move on. This was the first loss of the week, and they brought along a really, really impressive legendary Corrin to do it with. It's good to see her maxed out like this, like, only a few dragonflowers away from finishing mine, but red flowers are scarce. <laughs> And they've got her backed up with this male Corrin, who's just really impressively built, too. He's a great backup tank and can survive a lot of things that would potentially sneak past the legendary Corrin. As can this maxed out Naga, who is also backed up by this plus six Naga, who's. I actually really like the Goad and Ward Dragons combo for her, since you already have the Divine Fang buff available from the other Naga, you may as well get some extra support for the dragons. They take a couple of turns to set up here. Breaking the infantry school helps just by letting Corrin avoid those debuffs. Even though Dorothy is still getting some of the debuffs in, every bit counts. And once that's out of the way, they move the Corrins up and park on the defense tile. They also use one of the Nagas to protect Corrin and Reagan from the left side, which is really important since Hollywood can actually survive this counterattack from Corrin. But she does enough damage to him that he can't attack into Naga and survive. So he ends up just attacking her again. It's a little unfortunate that Rajat didn't attack instead here, and I think that's just because she wouldn't survive in the combat. If she had attacked, if I'd given her a sturdy impact, let's say, it, she would have gone in here, and Corrin probably would have died before the end of this fight. As is, though, Felix got to jump forward and pick off the support Corrin, but from there, 
Elliot can't get a whole lot done, except knock out, uh, get himself knocked out by Naga. And since Rajat hasn't had a chance to attack, especially with the dancers blocking her from actually reaching Horin, Saros can't get a whole lot done here. And Rajat does get to attack, but it's a little too late since nobody can actually follow up. They decide to keep going from here. It's really unfortunate that Dorothea couldn't actually get any dances either. But from here it's not so bad for them, even without the support Corrin. Legendary Corrin still got enough health to tank her way through most of the team. And by using Naga to finish off Felix, they take out Probably the only major threat left to Corin. And from there they can just park their other Naga behind Corin as a backup support. With the convenient upside of also beating Dorothea forward. And while Edelgard can survive this first Negating Fang boosted attack, she can't quite finish Corrin off. I won't back down. It's pretty close, but just not quite there. It's one of the reasons I'm really considering giving her a different A skill if I can. Attack defense ideal would be perfect if I didn't want to actually merge Fallen Edelgard. Maybe it shows up on somebody else. And well, from here it's easy enough for them to pick up the pots while keeping Dorothea pinned to the Panic Manor and then finish the map off after they're done. We did pick up a knockout here, so I'm not too worried about it. And I think with some extra investment, Rashat would have been able to attack Korn safely too. It's always good to bounce back from a loss with a successful defense. And this was a, actually a very interesting team to see in action. They brought along a duo leaf on offense, which is something I don't really see much of. And also brought along this maxed out young Azura. There was a point that I actually kind of wanted to fully merge her, but it's very hard to justify it when she just doesn't really do quite enough as a unique dancer to invest that many grails into, unless I end up with a boatload of grails that I don't have any other use for. Maybe someday, especially if she shows up in the Hall of Forms. They take a few turns here just to clear out the structures and try and find a way in. I think they were hoping to be able to finish off Felix or one of the people near him, and end up deciding that just trying to bait something out to start the fight is the best way to go around doing it. Unfortunately, they run into one of the sneaky bits with this, where if Ellie would actually prevents this map from activating when he rallies forward, as long as Mirabilis is isolated. And once they figure out that nothing's going to move until they actually do something else, they have Leaf attack Hollywood. And they can't finish him off, but it takes them two actions to do it. I'm watching. Let us go. Yes. And that means they have a bit of a harder time retreating than they might have liked. And, well, <laughs> ground orders into dance means that Felix ends up getting in range of ins. And 
Glimmer doesn't do a lot when you can't do damage to start with. Losing hands is enough for them to surrender and move on. This was another fun one to see. It's actually pretty rare that I see Hector with something other than Special Fighter in his beast slot, but the combination of Crafty Fighter and Brave Lucina is actually really effective, I think. And it also means that Lucina can support their fully merged Altina with a very similar result. And it gives them a bit of flexibility with how to approach things since they can bait two different targets at once. They take a moment just to try and test the trap, I think, maybe hoping to enable Vantage. And then they move into position and try to take out Rashat to start things off, but end up stepping on the gravity trap. Hollywood rallies forward and, well, without Vantage, Zeros can just one-shot Altina. Dances come through, and Felix can move up and one, not one shot, but two shot their Lucina. The Crafty Fighter does let Hector break through Eliwood's impact, thanks to his weapon kicking in as well, and he handles that pretty well. They are in a bit of a sticky situation when they continue, though, since without Lucina, a lot of their ability to tank well with this Hector goes away. And, well... You can see it here, when Rashad doesn't actually get hit back with a special and can just turn off his attack, and then get danced to finish him off. Which, well, with him out of the way, Felix can step forward and snipe Plumeria. Before his shot moves in to one shot Reagan. And while the rest of the team can't quite get to Naga in that corner, there's not a lot she can do on her own. They decide to just move forward and let the team end the match instead of surrendering. And Edelgard can jump in and do that very easily. This was actually a really interesting team that strategy that I haven't seen a whole lot of. And it involves using this Fury Lin and a Winter Bernadetta to enable an entire Wings of Mercy chain, thanks to Reciprocal Aid and just manipulating the health totals to get Lin into Wings of Mercy range after a single combat. It's a really cleverly set up team, and it was fun to see in action. Especially since, well, <laughs> Bernadetta herself is actually a really effective answer to Winter Felix. Since, well, she's a green mage to start with, and she also blunts his first attack by 30%, so there's no real way that he can handle her before she gets her second hit. They take a couple of turns just to set up and then move into position. And once they do, they can send Bernie in to start things off. I think the first major mistake here was not 
making sure that Bernadetta herself would get into Wings of Mercy range. With that said, once Felix is out of the way, it's very easy for them to start cleaning things up. And then with Wings of Mercy active, she can move in and pick up Dorothea, which eliminates the duo's entrance. And Self Dance lets her move over and take out Saros. But from here, they're starting to run out of actions. And there's only one unit left in Wings of Mercy range. They do get to pick off her shot too. But. Again, without Bernadetta in Wings of Mercy range, the rest of the team can't follow through. And, well, Edelgard is very happy to just punch through Bernadetta. No mercy. Why did I leave my room? Which lets Aliwood get access to the defense tile. And Gale force on through Reagan. And from there, he can actually pick up a third knockout on Plumeria. And losing half of their team like that is enough for them to surrender the match and move on. This one was the clean loss of the week, which... This is always unfortunate to see, but the maxed out Farsafe Hector is a very powerful unit to have right now. Especially when you back him up with a Gustav for near save and a flame. When it's played well, this triangle is actually just extremely difficult to break through, thanks to the damage reduction from flame and the save skills keeping everything safe. So, I'm not too annoyed by this. I do think it would have actually been winnable with some different skills, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's good to see, especially that it could be winnable if I had some different stuff equipped. Using Aether instead of Bonfire does mean that Rashad gets to survive Hector here. But unfortunately, she's not able to be danced from this position. Which actually ends up hurting us a lot, since Eliwood does get to drag Gustav forward. And if her shot was able to be danced here, she would have been able to attack Gustav and probably finish him off. Unfortunately, Gustav can survive Saros very easily. And then Edelgard actually gets danced instead. Felix jumps forward and can get a free attack on Hector, but he's not going to threaten him. And Edelgard is just barely missing enough damage to finish Gustav off. I think if she had attack defense ideal again, she would have actually killed him there. But from there, it's easy enough for them to start cleaning things up. Reagan doesn't have any problems finishing Eliwood off. And Gustav can deal with Rashad very easily. Before getting pulled back and healed and danced to finish Felix off with the Nickness. To open the way. I'm pretty sure they already had... This was probably their last match of the week, so they weren't worried about picking up the ether pods. And they can just pull back and enemy face the rest of the team. It is a bit unfortunate to see this, but it does continue to have me thinking about giving Edelgard a more flexible A skill than close defense. And I did get to rematch them and beat their 
secret defense, so that was fun. This was actually a really fun way to close the week out, especially as a rebound after the last match. They brought along an attack defense unity Lin, which is a really cool idea for her. I actually like it a lot since it's really easy to get debuffed and that can slow her down a lot. And this actually helps her to break through even some of the bulkiest opponents if she does get her attack debuffed. And they're backing her up with a Dew Seagird, along with four Mythics. And, of course, the Bolt Tower that doesn't get sniped, and a Catapult that snipes our Dew's Hindrance, and a Dew's Indulgence to cap things off. They had a lot going in their favor for this match. They take a couple of turns moving to position, just to get things started and wait for the Bolt Tower. And once that goes off, they start moving in. They pick off Eliwood first. I think they might have started realizing they were in trouble at this point though, because Lin can't actually kill this Felix, even after the Bolt Tower hits. They have Altina move in next, but she can't kill Edelgard, and even though she survives Edelgard, that's not really looking good for her. And they try to have Regan take down Rashad, but Heavy Trap gets in the way, and at that point they're kind of stuck. Everyone gets healed up by the healing tower, and well, Felix starts things off. An easy knockout on Seagard. And then he gets danced, and the ground orders chain gets going. Rashad can get out and one shot Reagan. Which lets Felix jump forward and pick off Plumeria. And Edelgard can move up and take down Naga. I won't back down. Such Before Ceres moves in and takes down Altina. Even if she had Vantage, which she doesn't hear, and the debuff from her shot would stop her from attacking anyway. But how? And all of that leaves Lin kind of stranded at the end of it all. They have her attack Mirabilis just as a sort of revenge knockout. But the match is basically over from there. And Edelgard moves in to take her down. It's a fun way to close the week out. It's always good to see Linz get walled out by Felix. Overall, things went really well this week. It's good to see. I might try out some new skills for the team, but I think overall I'm happy with the layout as it is. Unless, of course, I decide to experiment with Catria, which I might. But I think I'd like to tinker around with different skills for Brave Edelgard next. And if I can find a sturdy impact for Rashad, that would be really great too. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Good luck with your own matches, and I'll see you next time.